All right, welcome back everyone. Today we're going to talk about process layers and procedurals. In addition to everything that we've talked about before, utilizing masks and non-destructive workflows. Last time we were here, we talked about materials and smart materials. Um, from here, we're just going to go ahead and get started. So I'm going to click into my texture project. In here, I'm going to go ahead in the grenade base. You can see I have my fill layer. I'm going to call that base color. color. From here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new fill layer. Okay, the first thing I want to do is do a little bit of wear, like a metal edge wear. Substance has a, a like a procedural generator, a, gen, uh, a generator that does a procedural metal uh, edge. Uh, it does not have this in Marmoset, so we're going to figure out how to do that. So the first thing I want to do is I just want to select albedo, roughness, metallic. And let's do bump for now. I usually like to, let's turn it red just so we can see it initially. Okay, roughness, we can make it shiny and I want to make it metal, okay? We'll change the color once we're done. Right click, let's go ahead and add a black mask. Cool. Now that we're here, what we can do is, if you come up here to the top, we have our adjustment layers, like fill, uh, Photoshop uh, adjustment layers. You come up here, click this. This is our input processors, I believe. And uh, you can do curvature dirt. These are, are going to pull from the maps that we baked in. And then over here we have our procedurals, which will do like Perlin noise, uh, Veroni noise, that kind of stuff, turbulence, basically black and white maps that are procedurally generated to add variation. So we're going to go up to this little swatch, the processor one, and we're going to go ahead and do a curvature map. Curvature map is what affects, you can see it, it's highlighting there. Curvature maps are what affect the edges of objects usually. Okay, so now you can see we have our editor. You can see cavity. I'm going to remove cavity because I don't want it to hit the cavity, cavity at all because cavity is a lot for dirt, not, necessar not necessarily for wear. All right. What we can do is we can adjust the contrast. There we go. Now you can see we've adjusted the contrast off of everything except for the edges. Okay. Now we have some of this. We're looking pretty good. We might be able to adjust the edge intensity. No, nope. let's get let's, I'm going to go a little heavy on it at first. Okay. And then I can always back off with our blending layers and with the opacity linked or unlinked. Okay. But now we have the curvature layer. I'm going to call this metal edge. All right. Let's go back into our actual layer. Let's change this to like a white or a gray. That way it looks like metal. Let's go ahead and adjust that bump inward a little bit. There we go. Just a hair. Cool. Now from here, it doesn't look good because it's just like even all the way around. So what you're going to want to do is come back up to your layer. Okay. And you're going, one thing that you can do here is you can actually create a folder. And in this folder, I'm going to call it metal edge mask. Okay. I'm going to take this entire thing and I'm going to drop it into, into our folder. In the folder, you're going to add a black mask. Come back up to your process layer and let's add dirt. Okay, now we're in our layer settings, we have the dirt settings. We can actually apply a grunge map and that's what we're gonna do, okay? So if you come down here to your library, double click on textures and you wanna find a dirt, okay? I'm gonna find a dirt. Dirt surface looks good to me. I'm gonna go ahead and drop it in there, boom. Okay. Now if we can edit the intensity, the contrast, let's see what we got. Intensity, contrast, there we go. Okay, let's turn the intensity up a little bit more and get that contrast moving just so it breaks up a little bit more. Uh, we can adjust the grunge scale. There we go. And let's see, grunge scale's good. Crevice, we don't want, I'm gonna turn the crevice off. And occlusion, that'll be basically under anywhere that we have a little bit of shadowing. I'm gonna turn that down if, let's see what happens. Yeah, a little bit of self in there. Turn it down a little. There we go, now I have a little bit of edge wear. It is kind of blanket and amassed out in certain areas, so it doesn't look as bad. Perfect. Now what I can do is I can come back in to open this up, our folder, click in here, and now we can adjust the bump and see how it looks if I bring it in just a little more. There we go. Might be a little harsh, but mm, let's turn it up just a little, okay? There we go. Cool. Now we're getting a little bit of an edit. Alrighty, so now next thing I want to do is I, I want to add scratches. So I'm going to close this folder. I'm going to go ahead and create a new fill layer. In here, I'm going to do bump. Oh, I'm sorry, alt click. We'll select just that one, a bump. Uh, in that bump, so I don't know if y'all can hear, I have a bulldog in the background. Click in his paws. 
All right, bump, we're gonna go ahead, we wanna pull it way down at first. I'm gonna put a little bit of color in there as well, just cause I wanna see it, uh, how it's affecting. Okay, I'll turn that off in a little bit. And we'll call that scratches, scratches. Same thing, right click, add a black mask. In here, go up to procedural. Instead of dirt, we're actually gonna select the scratch. Scratch will come in, and now we have editing. We have a grunge map we can do. We also have a scratch map this time. So I'm gonna go ahead and search scratches. And you can see we have a whole bunch. I'm gonna, we can select a couple different ones. Uh, we have, let's do scratch sparse and see how this looks. Drop it in the scratch. All right, let's turn the contrast. There we go, intensity. All right, grunge intensity. Uh, let's go to the top, contrast. There we go. We just want to affect the scratches, okay? Looks like we're getting a little bit of curvature. Edge intensity, there we go. That's not edge thickness, edge contrast, there we go. I don't want those scratches on the edge uh, pulling from the curvature map because you saw what it looked like. Uh, okay, so let's go to scratch scale. and Let's see how that looks. Let's adjust the contrast in here. Let's see if we can actually bring it up a little bit more, okay? Let's, uh, let's actually scale that down. There we go. Let's see if I can, uh, yeah, let's adjust the sharpness and see how that, there we go. That's what we wanna do. We want it to get a little sharper. Let's go ahead and bring the intensity down a little bit. There we go. It's still very deep, but we'll handle that in just a second, okay? Cool. All right, so that's rough. We got some scratches on there. They're a little bigger than I'd like but I like the length of them, so we can actually adjust it up a little. Let's do contrast, bring it in. Okay, cool. Come back to our actual adjustment layer. Let's go ahead and put it at like the metal color. We can actually add a little bit of metal in here, which would be nice. There we go, get a little bit of a different hit. That bump is obviously far too intense, so if we go back to five, which is base, and we just wanna ba allow just a little bit of a specular hit, when we're, we're rotating off of it, and that's what we're getting right there, okay? It's still a little intense, but that's because uh, the color map, so I can turn the color off, but I'm gonna keep the color on because I like that little bit of white, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to the top here, right next to blending, we have opacity and a link. I'm gonna select that link, which allows us to choose which map we wanna adjust, and from there, I'm going to edit that, okay? Now we just have a little bit of whiteness in there, just a very little bit. I'm actually gonna adjust this bump to 0.48. There we go. So now we just have little scratches from a distance. It just adds a little bit of breakup. Good, now we have scratches. If we want, we could use the same masking folder technique to get that. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a dirt layer, okay? So I'm gonna come up here, add a fill layer, alt, roughness, bump. All right, so let's choose a dark color. We can choose a, a bright red too if you want to see how well it's affecting. Roughness, let's bring the roughness up and bump. We're going to leave that standard for now. I might adjust it later to see how I like it. Let's call this dirt. Yet again, same thing. You can always add a procedural without a mask. I just find it editing, that, editing over a mask allows you to do a non-destructive workflow. So come up here, let's do some dirt. Perfect. And now from here, we can go back to dirt. And you can choose whatever dirt. I would suggest using different dirt, but for this, I'm just gonna drag the same dirt in and give us a little bit of adjustment, okay? Let's go intensity. All right, let's say uh, you can see we have a lot under here and I'm gonna turn that down a little bit. I don't like all of that occlusion. Crevice, I'm okay with a little bit of crevice, not too much. And then direction, we're gonna definitely wanna up that direction, okay? Okay, and this is gonna, this direction you can actually see it's editing like where it is, a little bit of an even direction, all the way up is down, and you can also do like a negative one and, and flip the direction too. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of slide this down. That way we kind of get a nice even coat over everything. I'm gonna adjust the scale a little bit. And you can see it's kind of everywhere and it's kind of it, um, and that's not exactly what we want. So we want that grunge intensity. So we can turn down the intensity, which is giving us a little bit better of a break, okay? Sharpness, uh, there we go. Now, a little bit more of a blur. Cool. All right, so there's some, some dirt. It's a little distracting, but we'll go up here and edit it in a second. 
Um, one thing you can do if you find it's a little too procedural, like I said, you can go ahead and down here, you can create a new folder. You can drag this into that folder. Let's call this a dirt mask. Oh, mask. All right, from here, right click, add mask, add black mask, procedural, add a dirt procedural. In here, we can just drag that dirt back up in here. You can add the same one, just make sure you add a different grunge scale. And let's go ahead and adjust the contrast, adjust the intensity. There we go, let's go pull down occlusion, pull down crevice, direction intensity. Let's get up there, contrast, let's get down. All right, now we can adjust the scale of what it's gonna block out. So, and then we can adjust the contrast or the intensity, there we go. So now you have a, you basically have a, a mask on top of a mask, okay? Which allows you to give a little bit of dirt. It's a little much for me, so I'm gonna come down to my, my folder, or you can edit this, or just the folder in general, and I have it unlinked, so I can adjust the opacity, and I'm gonna turn that down just a little bit, okay? Boom, now you can see we have some dirt, we have some scratches, we have some metal edge wear, and we're pretty good, and if you wanted to do one more of these, you could basically just, Right click this, duplicate it off. We'll call this Dirt Mask 2. I'm gonna go ahead and select this. Let's change that color to a little bit more of like an off yellow color, good. And what I'm gonna do here is, with this, I'm actually going to adjust this a little bit and adjust the scale. That way we can, there we go, cool. Now we have, now the scale's a little, oh, the scale's a little larger. We get a little bit more coverage. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the occlusion and I'm gonna turn off crevice for this one because it's just a different one. And you can see now we have two and for this entire, this entire piece that I have here, I'm actually gonna go in. I need to adjust this map too. Let's turn that scale down. Let's turn up the grudge intensity. There we go. Cool. And now we have two different masks. Let me close that up. And from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and link this whole entire thing. And so since I have this whole thing linked, I'm actually able to adjust it as a whole. And what I can do is adjust both the color and the opac uh, and the roughness. If not, I can click this. I can go down to roughness and I can actually turn that up or down. So I'm gonna keep that a little lower because I want different styles of, rough, uh, of roughness and specular, like roughness hit on here or if old workflow, a specular hit. But I basically just want it to look a little different. Alrighty, so in this, tutorial thus far we've applied multiple different things like metal edge wear we've applied scratches we've applied two different dirts to break everything up okay and one thing I think I'm gonna do in here is actually before we go I'm gonna go back into my base layer and that bump I'm just gonna give it a little tap on the bump that way it gives us a little bit more so now it's not only it's like it's been bumped, bopped around, so that dirt is actually a little slight in just on one of them, okay? So you can do it however you want, but as thus far, we've been able to create a decent looking grenade base without any hand painting. Done nothing but use the process input layers to add adjustments, to add destruction, to add dirt to this. And it looks pretty decent for not spending much time at all and not having the hand paint. Now you can always go in and add a folder and mask hand paint out and mask out things you don't want. If it's not looking just right, you can hand paint stuff in too. Um, but for now, this is not a bad start for just using process input layers. And what we can do from here is do this same thing on these different aspects of this grenade. And you can even duplicate this whole entire stack and drop it under the grenade head or drop it on to this handle and you could basically just uh, make sure you reprocess the maps and you'll be able to edit i don't want this video running much longer since we're close to 15 minutes it's a bit of a long video but i just wanted to show you the aspects of using process input layers next we'll be talking about how to project if you want to put words on here or if you wanted to edit something like that. I'll show you how to use the brush in a non-destructive workflow to project or stamp on words in here and how to use layers to disrupt the look of that to make it look worn. Uh, and then we'll also talk about gradients as well, how to put gradients on this. There's multiple ways. All right, I'm gonna finish texturing this up in the same method. Uh, I hope you all do the same and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.